disease has secured from a shedding capacitance up to 250 picofarad. The unknown capacitance is connected to these two terminals and the meter will give a DC output which can be read on a DMM connected to these two terminals. This output will be proportional to the capacitance. To show this, I have here a box in which I have a capacitance of 100 picofarad between the red and green terminals, a capacitance of 47 picofarad between the orange and green terminal, and a capacitance of 22 picofarad between the blue and the green terminal. Now we will connect these two yellow terminals on the capacitance meter to the red and green terminals on the box. I have connected 100 picofarad and the reading is 2.31 volts. If I now connect 47 picofarad the reading becomes 1.18, which is roughly half the previous reading. The capacitance is also half. We have changed it from 100 to 47 picofarad. With this box, one can connect the capacitances in series or in parallel and verify the law of addition of capacitances in series and parallel. The second part of the experiment is to measure the dielectric constant of a liquid. For this, we have a cylindrical capacitor. This cylindrical capacitor has two cylindrical tubes which are coaxial, one inside the other, and there is an insulating bush between the two cylinders. We take two leads from the inner and outer cylinders and they come to these two terminals. So in a cylindrical capacitor, capacitance is proportional to the length. This capacitance is now filled with air, so if I connect it to these two terminals, I will get some voltage. When I put this capacitance in a jar, like what we have here, and then fill liquid through this nozzle, then the liquid will fill to different heights the capacitor. The liquid has a dielectric constant different from 1, so this part of the capacitor to which the liquid is filled will have a larger capacitance value and this part will be the capacitance value with the air. So total capacitance will now be more and the output voltage will be correspondingly more. And this you can see here. I connect these two leads from C to these two terminals. The output voltage is 0.125 volts. Now this is a bottle containing cyclohexane. So I will fill cyclohexane in this jar up to a certain level 
and you find the reading on the scale has increased from 0.126 to 0.146. If I fill more liquid, you will find the reading is more. So as I fill liquid to different levels, the reading keeps increasing. Till you fill this entire cylindrical capacitor with liquid. That will happen when the liquid level is at 90 milliliters on the jar. There are two things to be learnt from this. One is for a cylindrical capacitor, the capacitance varies linearly with the height to which the liquid fills the capacitor. So a cylindrical capacitor can be used to measure the level of liquid or control the level of liquid. This is one of the applications for a cylindrical capacitor. Secondly, when the liquid completely fills the capacitor and you take the value here and divide it by the value when there was no liquid filling the capacitor, this ratio will give you the dielectric constant of the liquid. So you can measure the dielectric constant of a liquid, non-polar liquid, by filling this jar with the liquid up till it completely fills the cylindrical capacitor. This is a very easy way of measuring the dielectric constant. But you can use only non-polar liquids, that is liquids which do not have a permanent dipole moment in this jar. If we want to measure the dipole moment of a polar liquid like acetone, we mix small quantities of the polar liquid with the non-polar liquid like cyclohexane and then we determine the dielectric constant of the mixture for various concentrations of the polar liquid in the non-polar solvent. From the measured dielectric constant one can calculate the dipole moment of the polar molecule.